Hello everyone, Alter of Zoom speaking. Today we are reviewing my latest Max for Live device and the looper. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Actually, where did it start from? Um, uh, in the past weeks, I've released uh, on my Patreon website a pitch envelope uh, device which uh, allowed to make a simple uh, pitch envelope. Uh, <laughs> that's it. So could you use it to do a riser, down lifter, or just shape uh, the pitch of an incoming sound uh, and do the same on a wave file uh, at the same time. And uh, I told myself that it would be interesting to do the same on uh, volume instead of uh, pitch. Um, so you probably know uh, about some uh, devices that allow to do uh, similar stuff. So I say, uh, staying on the, on live, you have Shaper, which is not exactly working uh, on volume, but it can be mapped to a parameter in any synth that would control the volume. Still, it's at uh, live control rate, so it's not audio audio rate, so it's uh, the timing is not tight enough, so that, that was something which I didn't want to use. Um, of course, you have LFO tool, which, uh, which is a pretty awesome plugin, uh, but it's not a max for life, and it has a few drawbacks uh, with regards to to synchronization, uh, so you have to sometimes to play with the offset when doing it. But uh, again, I'm not. I was not trying to redo uh, this kind of stuff. And you have many, many other plugins and the VSTs on the say, on the thing. But um, I wanted to do my take on this one and maybe uh, add a bit of uh, weirdness uh, on it. So um, let's have a look at the UI first. So to the left, you recognize the drawing, shape drawing function and that you can define on the pitch, pitch envelope, for example. It's a classical one. Um, so you can define the grid, X and Y. You can snap your points to the grid. So simply, simple as that. If you click on the point, you can move it. If you shift click on the point, you just remove it. If you click anywhere, it creates a point. Um, and then if you alt uh, drag on a line, and, uh, then you can change the shape and the curve of that line. So it's pretty simple to use. Uh, I've put some additional, uh, took the presets uh, from the shaper and added uh, two free, like for example, a trans gate uh, and uh, what, what I call a hat pattern. So we'll come back to that later. And I have also a flip envelope, so I can mirror upside down the the shape, and I can clear to draw a new envelope as soon as I want. So it's pretty simple. I have this one, which is more or less a uh, side chain, so we can adapt just the start point and end point. Uh, when you load it, it's uh, set it's set to to rate of uh, one fourth, so which is a quarter, yeah, a quarter. And uh, it's meant it's set to looping, as here, as we see here. Uh, as by default, you can use it as a simple envelope, and so it wouldn't loop. It was just trigger once, and that's it. That's really up to you. But from a general standpoint, I think that most people will use it as a looping envelope and not just a simple envelope. Yeah. Again, we have the envelope. By the way of Max, uh, which is the envelope follower, uh, which is something which I get inspired with a bit from. Again, it's working on parameters, not strictly speaking on uh, sound, on volume. So again, issues with regards to to timings. And, uh, and the parameters are maybe not, it's not really uh, the parameters you would expect from an envelope follower. I mean, you can understand what it means, but it's in percent. Uh, usually it's not what you want so it wasn't not a candidate uh, either so let's start by something simple um, let's make a hat pattern so I mean you will say okay how can I do a hat pattern with uh, this kind of stuff 
let's give it a try. So, um, opening up Serum, I've just loaded a noise sample. So that's just a simple, simple noise, nothing fancy. And I have a simple MIDI clip, which is just a row a note playing. So nothing really interesting. But then if I start to shape this, let's start by doing some side chaining. Still again on the one fourth. You'll see that I'm starting to have some uh, pumping on the on this noise. Sorry, I already have something <laughs> on the track. So it's pretty simple. I can increase the speed, decrease it, decrease it. I can go up to 32 bars. I mean, if you're gonna do a riser, then sometimes you want to have something which is really slow. It can go pretty fast. It's going down to one millisecond, and in that case, we basically enter in the in the world in the realm of uh, amplitude modulation, so AM. So it's not. Uh, it's, I mean, this is some strange uh, behavior, but let's give it a try. Okay, so that's not the purpose, but uh, it's uh, so, and that's not the proper sound probably to to do this kind of experiments. So let's switch back to one fourth, and let's load up now uh, what I call the hats pattern. So you see that every uh, every quarter I have this pattern which is repeating, which is playing each. 16 uh, with various amplitude and if I play that on my noise then we're gonna distinguish the usual uh, groovy pattern of a close hi-hat I can play with it, I can change the barrels, let's increase a bit the grid tighten So I can pretty much create any kind of pattern just by drawing. Can have something a bit tighter. I have this smooth parameter here, which will allow you to remove any clipping. Here it doesn't make any clipping because just oh, it's just some white noise, so there probably isn't any clipping happening. But still, I can do it. So here I'll just have a blurring in the in the volume envelope. So from that standpoint, when we have something which is pretty simple, you can load up uh, several several different patterns. It's pretty convenient to use, you can invert, you can have the exact opposite of this one. So this is the trans gate. And I can play with the depth of the envelope. So for that part, it's pretty much it. It's simple. I mean, it's just a, a, a looping envelope on the incoming audio sound. But there's, of course, way more than that. Uh, all this section, I haven't talked at all about it. It allows you to, as in the pitch envelope, it allows you to use a WAV file, to load a WAV file and uh, do things with it with regards to that same envelope. So for now, I just loaded, let's just silence this one and listen to what I've done. So I have loaded a kick, which is a pattern. 
simple one, one kick, but which which have to which I have added uh, a bit of silence and in the end, um, just to explain you why later. So just a simple kick. And then, so this kick, I'm just drag and dropping in this area. And uh, the device is telling me that this uh, file I've dropped is six seconds and it's a zero file. So it has two channels. Um, um, yeah. Okay, I can display the file. So if you play with your opacity, you will better see the contents of that file. And you can also zoom it vertically. It has absolutely no impact on the on the playback, but it's uh, if you want to have a look and see what's what's going on, it's usually better. And then um, when the and when the, the transport is playing and incoming audio, and there is some incoming audio, then the device will start playing the wave file. Uh, it will start playing the wave file. Yeah. Uh, there is a trestle here, so it's basically f working like an envelope follower. So as soon as the input audio reaches the trestle which I've put there, then I'm going to start playing the wave file. There is an attack, meaning that uh, this, uh, this, the device will wait uh, after I've reached this threshold before starting to play. And as well, I have a release which means that um, the sound, the wave file, will continue to play after the input audio have gone downward below the threshold. So let's just put that to zero for the time being and let's see what it does. Uh, wave file now is zero. So I have the gains, I have a separate gain for the input audio and for the wave file. Sorry. Uh, this we'll play only this one. So the device is telling me that I'm above the threshold. So if I increase the threshold, then you see that I'm not triggering the wave file anymore. Let's see what it does. So you see, I'm above the threshold. So the wave file is playing, but if I go upward, it doesn't anymore. You can put some attack. If I put one second of attack, I've got to increase the threshold, but the wave file will play one second later. Oh, sorry. And the same point. If I put the release one second, then I start to play and stop to play. Simple. Let's say that I don't care about the trestle, I want something pretty synchronous. When you load a file, the device will uh, by default play the WAV file from its beginning to its end at the regular speed. It means that you, whatever you put there, you, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna loop. Uh, if I play loop, of course, um, I can deactivate that. If I do that, then my wave file, whatever it is, will only play once. Or not. Oh, yeah, that's not true. That's another one. So it's just playing once. This auto retrigger allows you to sync the wave file playback to the rate of uh, the envelope, meaning that uh, if you have some sequence playing there, you want to make sure that this sequence will respawn each time I reach the this this rate. So if I say I'm um, every bar, and I auto trigger, even if my wave file is not supposed to loop, it will play exactly once every bar. Let's remove the auto trigger. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna select exactly which part I'm gonna play. So, gonna this lower this value. So you see that we are seeing exact selection that we've made on my on this kick sample. So I'm gonna know exactly what I'm playing. gonna 
assign in the input. That's pretty simple. Still, um, sometimes I'm gonna want to synchronize that to some points like zero crossing. So what I can do is I can adjust sample wise the, the values from my loop. So this way, I'm sure that I'm crossing zero when the Wi-Fi loops. It's in case you have some clicks. I can of course play with that okay, as well. You can select an area, I can play from the beginning as well. Remove the initial transient. And now we get something which is kind of a sign sine wave so it has a pitch talking about pitch uh, i've added this small stuff you know that i like couplet strong synthesis and uh, all that kind of stuff um, i can select a note here and the end sample will be adjusted so that the looping area of my sample will be will match to the pitch uh, i've selected If I change the start value, I do the same. So I'm playing a different section, but again with the same loop. And then I can as well play with the speed of play of my wave file. Let's uh, say I want to get play again the full kick. And I run a, let's get back to one quarter. So it's going to play every, every quarter and re-trigger. So I'm 155, so it's pretty fast. But I'm going to increase, I'm going to play with the speed of my kick. So you see that I've, it's not exactly what I would have liked to, because I have some uh, additional kicks which I didn't want. It's because when looping, if I am accelerating, before I'm reaching the end of a quarter, I'll reach the end of my wave file because I'm faster than real time. And so it's gonna loop and replay. So what I can do is, I can stop that, so I will have just one kick playing. It's a simple way. But I lose the ability to play with the pitch and all that kind of stuff. So instead what I've done is I've taken the original kick, which was just one, one, uh, one beat. And I've basically added to a file which was quite longer. So you just select, uh, you select your kick. I can, you can redo it anyway. So I can put my kick here. I can um, uh, consolidate. I think it's going to be enough. I can consolidate, and now I have an area which is which has this length, but which is still just one kick. And this thing I can drag to my to my uh, to my device again. So now I have this one. Sorry. Now I can select my full uh, my full area because uh, I don't care about um, the end as I'm retriggering. So here I'm not hitting anything, of course. And 
and I'm just hearing one kick, even if I'm increasing the speed. Oh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit more. Hmm. I can have a speed which is lower than normal. And I can, of course, play backward. I'll try to at least. If I'm playing backward, then I'm playing from the end of my sequence, which is silent, so I will never hear it. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm getting bubbles. That's unexpected. special effects, creative stuff. So if I put minus one and I select the pitch, then I have my kick playing backwards, but still providing a pitch. You see that if I activate the auto trigger, then the sample playback is starting over every bar. So, so if you want to play with, uh, make some creative stuff and pitch effect and all that kind of stuff, it's probably not the better, uh, probably not, it's not better not to activate the auto trigger and only have the, uh, the wave. So uh, what can I do now? I'm gonna do something a bit different. I'm gonna do uh, an effect. Um, how do I do? How do I want to do that? Let's start by my uh, original kick. I will say I'll just have one one beat. Consolidate. So I have my, just one one beat, exact because I map to the tempo of my track. And um, let's drag it to this new area. And now. I'm going to use that sample, which is exactly one beat. So I'm going to play the full sample, regular speed. Let's just listen to what it does. So you see that for now, I'm not using at all the looping envelope. I mean, because I am not playing at all with the volume, with the volume shape. It's just, it was going to be a bonus uh, afterward, but probably not on a kick. Now what I can do is play with the automation here and change the end to have some effect on my kick. Let's listen to that. Let's go even further. Probably not up to zero because it would be quite horrible. Um, like that. There we go. Okay. I can play as well with the speed. Start by playing at regular speed, but increasing that speed as time goes. So I'm gonna get a kick riser. And there we go. So Again, I'm sorry, but uh, my envelope is not working at all. Uh, I'm not using it uh, at all in that specific area, so it's uh, much more, much more than just an envelope. But whatever, uh, I felt that I wanted to have that feature, and uh, it was the right right time and place for me to add it. So um, you can want to use it. But let's try to coming back to the regular uh, user. A classic sample, so not probably not a, not a kick or nothing perk 
Um, I only have kicks. Okay, not bad. Oops, sorry. Really. Okay, let's try this one. I'm gonna remove all the envelopes. triggering my my sample and I'm uh, using the envelope shape on it so no shape so it's just playing every quarter full depth I can do some pattern on that Sometimes when you're cutting too much, then you probably lose some some gain. Can play faster. achieving what we want. I mean, if we want to play that in a track, we don't have to, to have tuned. Oh, G, yeah, that's it. try on something else. That's against. Oof. It's really too high. I think it's not, not doing anything. Yeah, some stutter. This one is interesting as we will be able to select which part we want on the sample without having to shop anything. Nice. 
yeah sometimes when i i've just noted that i change the rate it changed the display but you see that this selection this blue selection area doesn't change meaning that i'm just changing what part of the wav file i'm displaying but i'm not changing what i've actually selected so as soon as you just touch this and change one symbol you're back and zooming that's probably something i have to correct later but it's uh it's it, just, it doesn't impact the feature If you like to do some math, then you can try to calculate how many samples correspond to a quarter and then just use that to make sure that you're gonna loop uh, with a, within a quarter. It's not very complex. I haven't put that as a, as a tool, but there are many tools that exist on this area. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I have 60,000 milliseconds and I'm 150, so we've a quarter. Um, a quarter is gonna be probably even pretty wrong. Never knew. Uh, trying again. No, no, that was that was it. But I, that was not the figure I had. Yeah, that's better. I don't know why I did it. So it means that a quarter is three hundred and three hundred and eighty-seven milliseconds, uh, which is um, which I have to divide uh, by uh, multiply by forty-four, which is the rate and divided by 1000 so a quarter is uh if i'm not totally wrong and i think i am <laughs> whatever it's one and seven zero one seven zero samples yeah i'm pretty wrong on this i should have that's yes. oh, 17070, sorry. I think it's good. I think it's, I think that's it. So I'm basically looping at the exact rate of a quarter. It's a bit awkward, I mean, probably there are many tools that allow you to do the same type of cal calculation. It depends on the sample rate and the BPM of the track, but uh, that's it. So I um, think I've pretty much covered all the, all the device. Um, there probably uh, are many other usages of it which I haven't th thought of and uh, I will not going to present today. So uh, feel free um, to put you comment uh, on my video if you um, think that it's an interesting tool. They'll head out to my Gumroad page. If um, you have any question, and feel free to put them below in the comments. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you like it, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to support me even more, you can head to my Patreon and uh, grab some stuff there, some discounts and some free devices as well. Thank you, guys.